everybody. Let's discuss a different amplifier configuration using op amps. So as opposed to the inverting amplifier last time, this is a non-inverting amplifier. So whereas last time we fed a signal to the inverting input, this time we're going to feed a signal to the non-inverting input here. And we're going to send it through a resistor. So I'm going to call my input some VG. And this is some resistor in series with that input. And we're going to tie the inverting input straight to the ground. Well, to the ground through a resistor here. So the inverting input is tied to ground. Okay, and then the output is here, but we're going to feed back the output and we want negative feedback. So we're going to feed it back to the inverting input here through a feedback resistor. Okay, so this is the configuration typical for a non-inverting amplifier. So you see there's something here and the, in the signal is going to the non-inverting input. Okay, and then there's power supply. Okay, let's analyze this thing. So let's use the node voltage method where our essential nodes right here. I'll call this node N. And note that there's current here and here. Right, so this is I, N, I, P. And then the voltage here is VN. The voltage here is VP. The voltage here is VO, the output voltage. Okay, with respect to this reference. Now, here, let's do KCL at node N. So going this way, VN minus the zero over RS. Now let's go up this way. So VN minus VO over this feedback resistor. And then now let's go this way. So the current here I drew going toward the right. So plus IN equals zero. Okay, for an ideal op amp, the voltage here equals the voltage here. So let me write that down. For an ideal op amp, that's true. Now, what is the voltage here compared to the voltage here? So here is zero, here is more. So right here it's VG, right here it's VP. VG on this side, VP on this side, and this current here is IP. So these will be different unless this current is zero, and that's the other idealization. For an ideal op amp, the current is zero. The current here is zero, the current here is zero. If this is zero, that means the voltage here equals the voltage here. This is zero. Right, so that means Vn equals Vp, but then Vp is the same as Vg over here because the current is zero. Okay, and then this current is zero because of this idealization, so that's a zero. Vn is the same as Vg, I'll just write it like this. Okay, so now let's get an expression for the output. Let me just rewrite that over here. Okay, I'll move this on the other side of the equation and then divide, uh, multiply everything by RF. Okay, so here we go. Making note that 
it's not whatever we want, it's right. It's limited by the power supply. Okay, so notice that the output is not inverted, right? If the input is positive, the output is positive. Input is negative, output is negative. And there is some gain here based on the ratio between this feedback resistor and this resistor here. Okay, let's try an example. So this is a design problem. So it's asking us to design a non-inverting amplifier with a gain of six. Okay. Now take a look at this formula. We want this to be six. So that means RF over RS plus one equals six. Move this on this side. So we need RF over RS to be five. So we need a ratio of five. So let's take a look at a table of common resistor values. We want something like 100 and 500, uh, there's no 500, so maybe like something like 1500 and 300. That would be a ratio of 5. Uh, there's no 300 ohm resistor. So what we could do is we could just take two 150s in series, and that would be a 300 ohm resistor, right? So then you have a 1.5k and a 300. That ratio is 5. So we can do that. Okay, and then, so that's done, right? So our, right, this is a 1.5k and this is 300. All right, now let's say we're given an input that is in this range. What should we choose for our supply voltages? So if the input is this much and this much, the output is six, right? That's what we got. So if, well, if VG is negative 1.5, And the output's going to be negative 9. Or if the input is 1.5, then the output's going to be 9. So there we go. As long as our supply voltage is at least plus or minus 9. So our circuit has to be at the very least 9 volts here and then negative nine volts here. And then our feedback resistor was 1.5K. And then this one was 300. And here we go. There's our non-inverting amplifier circuit. And then let's take this one more step we have to watch out that the resistors don't burn, right? So then you have to compute what is the power for this resistor? What is the power for this resistor, the feedback resistor? Okay, so the voltage here, here is the same as the voltage here which is the same as the voltage here because there's no current here. So at most Vg, so let's say uh, 1.5 volts, and then the voltage here, zero. So for this resistor, 1.5 minus zero, V squared over R. And then for the feedback resistor, the voltage here and the voltage here, on this side it was 
at most, 9 volts. And then on th if this is 9 volts, this side was 1.5. So V squared over R. Okay, let me punch these in the calculator. Okay. Okay, so that's the power at most for each of those resistors. So let's say if we use quarter watt resistors, uh, no problem, they're not gonna burn. So always check, right? If we used smaller valued resistors, then see the denominator would be smaller, which would make these numbers larger. So then we'd have to be careful and always check. Okay, so I hope this was helpful. Let's explore some other configurations in future videos. I'll see you on those.